perfect. What is up guys, Dakota here, and welcome back to the Driven Mad channel. So in today's video, we are gonna be fixing that problem that you guys just saw, which is getting rid of this gigantic hump here from the Bronco's rear seats, because that's kind of a pain to have. I mean, it's it's folded, but it, it just, it's not very good. And you don't even get to take advantage of using, pushing that seat forward because the bottom seat cushion is in the way. So we're gonna be fixing that. And as you guys know, uh, if you watch any of my previous like install videos, it usually doesn't go very smoothly and they're kind of a pain to film, but I figured this should be fairly straightforward. It shouldn't be that big of a project. So I figured we just go ahead and show you guys what it looks like. So this is the 50% rear delete system. So I'm only getting rid of one seat, still maintaining one of them, which I want to do just because, you know, if I want to take an extra person, I still want to be able to do that. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. First stuff that we're going to do is take off these plastic covers covering the, uh, these hooks real quick. And then we'll end up taking the hooks off. You just kind of, you move this up. You're going to push in here, start to lift up and you can fold that back down. And then you just pull and it comes right off. As you guys can see there, um, it kind of, you can see how it kind of latches in. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and take this 10 millimeter socket and undo these. Now I have no idea how tight these are. So it's going to be a first time seeing kind of, uh, if it's going to be a pain or if we can do this fairly easily. All right, so the next step after you get that done is you're gonna go ahead and lift this up and then lift these pieces that the hooks are holding down. And you're just gonna kind of lift that up there and then it comes right out. So, uh, go ahead and pull this guy out of here. Then obviously this is where the first platform is gonna go. It's gonna go right here. Um, I went with the driver side hatch because I figured that if I was gonna be putting stuff over here, it wouldn't make sense to have the passenger side hatch to where it opened up from here, because if there's stuff here, you wouldn't be able to get to it. So I have the driver side access hatch to get into this little cubby hole there. Um, but so far, that particular part was pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And uh, now we're gonna get on with the rest of it. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install the rear plate. So, You basically just want to make sure it's aligned with the original holes. Then you're going to take these guys right here. My, the one that they, the bolts that they want you to use, my particular bag has the keys in them. So just to help you guys out in a sticker. So the sticker and the keys has the correct bolts. You should have eight of them with the washers as well. And we're just going to loosely place them first. Then we're going to work on the seat. All right, so we got it loosely mounted in here. Just the bolts just again, loosely just kind of in place. You guys can see here, this is where the jack and the little funnel is. So you'd have to undo these to actually get to it, which I don't think is a huge deal, at least not for me. And here you guys can see I have the driver's side access point. Cause again, since I'm removing this one, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for me to pile gear here and have it over here. So that's why I picked this. So you just pick it up and they have ac access to that little cubby. So that's pretty cool. And you can lock it, um, which is also pretty cool. 
So yeah, now what we're gonna do is get started on the seat and I believe we're gonna start with the bottom seat cushion. All right, so the next step is to remove this. As you can see, this is the bottom seat cushion. The back is currently up and we're gonna go ahead and use a T40 Torx bit to undo these and then we should be able to take this guy completely out. <laughs> By the way, look at what I'm gonna use to, yep. The Ford boys are getting mad. I'm gonna use the Jeep's um, <laughs> hardware set to take these bad boys out because I don't know what I do with my other Torx stuff, but here we go. Then they also recommend to just go ahead and put these guys back, um, back here, just so you know you don't have to keep track of them, and just in case you lose them. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put these back, and uh, say we're making some decent progress. All right, so we basically had to take off these little trim pieces that cover up some bolts. So on the front one, it just kind of pops out. This one right here on the back side, um, it was easier for me to just kind of pry it out with a. Um, a screwdriver and then there's one over here and they want you to then fold the seat then what we're going to need is a 18 millimeter socket as well as a little extension to kind of get in there and then a ratchet and we'll start taking out both of these then we'll move the seat up and work on the front too <laughs> So once you get those bolts removed, the next step is this little flap right here. You lift up and you're gonna disconnect this guy and then you'll be able to, which is like the sensor I believe for like the seat belt and whatnot, you know, cause it kind of just, um, so once we do that and then we're gonna be able to take this seat out. All right, so the next step is you're actually gonna remove this plastic trim piece from the kind of seat assembly here to get to the seat belt because what we're gonna end up doing is taking this bolt out and then taking the seat belt and this connector and plugging it back in so you don't get a constant seat belt and airbag warning. So um, I pretty much ruined the two because <laughs> um, I don't have the proper tools and I didn't want to go anywhere to buy it. I just wanted to get it over with. So there's one here, at least on the, this again, this is for the passenger side. So there's one right here. There's one here, which is what the seat belt um, sensor is connected to. And there's one uh, right here, you guys can see that, there we go, that you gotta take out, and then that will allow you to kind of move this and gain access to that guy right there, which is a T50 Torx bit, so we're gonna go ahead, remove that, and get the seatbelt um, latch taken out and get everything put back in. One tip for you guys on this part, because that bolt is on extremely tight, when you go to loosen it, you might smash your hand into the middle seat bracket there, so just watch out for that. All right, so next we gotta take off this guy right here. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can get this off with the screwdriver. It's just a little retention washer. So, so this basically took me way longer than it should have. You should just try to cut it off with some like needle nose pliers, but I didn't have any. So basically what I started doing was once I started prying it up, I then just started trying to undo the bolt and that would slowly push that washer up, but Quick tip, if you have something that can cut it, just use that. All right, so once you get the seat belt out, you're then going to take the belt and the connector and you're going to lift this flap up here, connect it and kind of just stuff the seat belt in there and then put it back together.
All right, now we've got that done. The next step is there's this flap right here that kind of covers the bolt. So we basically take this and they want you to kind of fold it and we'll tuck it underneath. So once it's like that, then you should be ready to go to the right, next we're step. We're supposed to install this mending plate. Now there are supposed to be two. One to marry up this, one to marry up this. I only have one, so um, I think I may have gotten shorted one, but um, I also just did a little test fit to see how it looks, and that looks pretty sweet. So, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and install this on this side and get the rest of it done just to get it secure, and then while I wait for one of these to show up, um, because it, sh it shouldn't be that hard. It's literally just going to be bolting down that stuff. So I'll unbolt it, pop this one back in, my second one when I get it, and then it should be good to go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the mending plate and put it here. Now from what I understand, the raised section, oops, sorry, the raised section is supposed to be flipped this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all the screws and get, get them over here. And try to get this guy set up. Next, we've got this piece where we're supposed to use uh, to kind of turn these little T-nut things. And then we're gonna slide this into place and they want the hole, so you see this little hole right here, to be over on this side. So whether you got the passenger or the uh, driver side where this notch is right here, they want this hole to line up with there to be on that side of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these up. With a, it's a T25 torch bit. Might need to adjust the front a little bit to the flap to kind of move it over just a little bit just to make sure that it clears. So might do that. All right, so we're gonna take the washer and put it over there, take this one, and we're going to add it over here. I'm just gonna loosely tighten everything just to kind of get it figured out first before I start trying to really tighten things down. We're gonna put grab these two guys and insert them into the the mending plate here. So, might have to loosen these up a little bit. So for the eight screws in the rear system, you're gonna use a 3 16 bit. For the bolts going where the seat was being held down, you're gonna use a 5 16 socket for those. All right guys, so there it is. This is uh, what the plate system looks like. As you can see, there's the Passenger seat, basically just where it was, and you can see there's still a little bit of space so you can slide it further back. And now you've got all of this space to uh, to use now, and it's flat. Now, I am still missing a couple of things. So like I said, I'm missing these, this right here, this plate, this mending plate over on this side. And I haven't tightened these down quite to where they're super flush, and I'm missing one right up here but i've gotten in touch with goose gear and they're going to uh they're already sending out that stuff so but for now i mean it looks pretty solid all right guys so that's basically it it is now installed except for uh like i said I'll, obviously i'm gonna have to wait for those other screws and then i'll just kind of reloosen everything and put them back in correctly so overall i say it was fairly simple um again if i had had everything correct i mean it, it'd be done and it shouldn't take that long um, just you're gonna, you know, just like most things, you're just gonna loosely fit together at first, then kind of tighten everything down once you get going. Now, if you do plan on, you know, let's say if you ever plan on selling it um, and then putting that stuff back in, make sure you keep all that stuff because I'm like a lot of those things will be kind of a pain to find. 
So uh, that's kind of what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna keep it in the um, in the boxes that they came in. Anyways, guys, um, now I can actually mount like a fridge in here, which would be pretty awesome. And mount a slide to where it can be, say maybe like right here, and I can put stuff here and even behind it, or mount the fridge all the way back here, or kind of however I really like to, kind of mount it closer to the front and then have even more space. I'm pretty excited because um, you know I really want to get kind of a better setup for when I do those longer trips to Moab or Colorado, maybe even California. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys found it helpful or if you just found it entertaining watching me struggle <laughs> um, as usual. And uh, if you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, make sure you click that bell notification so you get notified for more videos, whether it's on this, 392, the other Jeep, the Shelby, and some other stuff that's coming in. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.